Big Show has had a long, successful, and varied career. From rookie world title wins in WCW as The Giant, through capturing pretty much every top title in WWE, to starring in Best Picture Oscar nominee Knucklehead, his enormous legacy is assured. But despite all the championship wins, memorable storylines, and his tour de force turn as Captain Insano, one thing about Big Show's career sticks out like a sore thumb. All those bloody heel and face turns. Big nasty bastard one second, lovable oaf the next. These turns on a whim have become so synonymous with Big Show that he can't even go to the shops without someone stopping him to ask if he's currently a goodie or a baddie. In his 22 years on and off with WWE, Big Show turned a staggering 32 times. That is 1.4545 turns per year, but when you consider the numerous sabbaticals he's taken during his career, then it's probably more like two turns per year at the very least. Some turns have been great, some badly timed, and others picked straight out of thin air. But which is the best, which is the worst, and which just sort of happened? So yes, we are finally doing it. You can stop commenting under every single video we do saying, Hey Adam, rank Big Show turns. Yo ads, Big Show turns, yeah? Pachita, you absolute dickhead. Where's the damn Big Show turns ranked list? It is right here, so you better watch it, like it, send it to a friend, buy a t-shirt, and tweet about me to all 63 of your Twitter followers. I'm Adam Pachiti from Cultaholic Rest and this is every single Big Show turn ranked from worst to best. Join us. Number 32, Face Parody Mania in 2000. WrestleMania 2000 wasn't exactly a stellar showcase of the Immortals, but it featured our man Big Show in the main event against Mick Foley, The Rock, and Triple H for the WWE title. Show got eliminated quicker than you can say overbooked main event, and thankfully handled the situation well by turning face and devolving into a comedy parody guy for a short while thereafter. While at the time we chuckled as the Showster, Big Showbowski, and Showkishi parodies were happening, going from WrestleMania main event's world title contender to the world's largest impressionist in a few weeks was just awful for everyone involved. Considering that less than four months later, Show was written off TV and sent to OVW to lose weight and sort out his attitude, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that this parody gimmick was bequeathed to him as a form of punishment. Still, Big Show somehow managed to squash win over Kurt Angle while dressed as the Show Star. Number 31, Face Ninja Fighter in 2020. Remember in 2020 when the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders were having their odd let's see who the best tag team is without actually wrestling competition? You know, the one that involved turkey legs, bowling, women throwing themselves at Ivar, and a strange dumpster squid thing that I think was a Star Wars reference? Well, things were at its weirdest slash most embarrassing when Akira Tozawa was turned into a ninja master because lazy stereotypes, as he and his Foot Clan started wrecking shop around the bottom of the card. After multiple scraps all over WWE programming, Tozawa's crew looked to have the numbers advantage on the Vikings and the Profits. But wouldn't you know it, Big Show turned up to smile and punch people and then disappeared again into the night like a seven foot tall Batman. Show did stick around for a few weeks, defeating Garza and Andrade in a handicap match to the groans of diehard wrestling fans, before Splinter Cell Randy Orton targeted him as part of his odd legend killer Mark II run. Number 30, Heel vs Drew McIntyre in 2020. If you were to ask Big Show why he turns on a dime, then the kayfabe answer would probably most likely be because of title shots. Either that or there was a battle royal coming up or something, it's hard to keep track, alright? A year after his last run in WWE, save for a cup of coffee in January 2020, Show appeared at the Performance Center as Drew McIntyre lifted the WWE title at the end of night two of WrestleMania 36 and demanded a title shot right there and then. No Money in the Bank briefcase, no number one contenders match, Show just turned up at the end of Wrestle Bloody Mania and decided that he needed the strap. What a go-getter. McIntyre steamrolled Show, and the whole incident was screened the next night on Raw, rather than having Show main event mania for the first time in 20 years. After the match, Show went back to his home planet for several months. Number 29, Face the Invasion in 2001. 
After a decent heel run as part of the Hardcore Division, Sho got involved with Invasion shenanigans and was an automatic face due to his siding with WWE. Considering he was given the World Heavyweight title in his first WCW match, you would have assumed that he would have sided with the Naughty Alliance. Sho as a face was pretty toothless, and despite being part of the victorious WWE team in the main event of Survivor Series, Big Show was the first eliminated after best wrestler ever Shane McMahon nailed the leap of faith. Ah well, said Sho, you win some, you lose some. But this was merely trash icing on a big poo cake, as before Survivor Series, he hitched his wagon to floundering mid-carder Billy Gunn to form the tag team Shoguns. You know, like Shogun. Okay, so the name didn't make much sense, pun aside, as neither man was a warrior from 13th century feudal Japan. Didn't matter anyway, as nobody cared about the team, and they quietly disbanded after about 15 minutes. Number 28, Face. Big Show leaves Jericho for Team Raw in 2009. The Jericho team of Big Show and Chris Jericho was a classic example of making the best out of a bad situation. After Jericho and Edge won the unified tag titles, the Rated R Superstar suffered one of his all-too-frequent long-term injuries and Big Show took his place. The team were a highlight of WWE TV and a legit threat in a tag division which was a serious afterthought, but unfortunately bragging rights was on the horizon and fake brand supremacy is more important than actual accomplishments. Jericho was co-captain of Team SmackDown, so of course Big Show turned face by beating Jericho for a spot on Team Raw, temporarily dissolving Jericho in the process. Rubbish. Number 27, Heel. Big Show screws Team Raw at bragging rights in 2009. Big Show turned heel again at bragging rights when he attacked Raw teammates Kofi Kingston and Triple H, allowing Jericho BFF Chris Jericho to get the win. Why does anyone trust this man? Number 26, Heel. Big Show joins the bar in 2018. On SmackDown 1000, tag champs The New Day put the titles on the line against The Bar, Sheamus and Cesaro. The bad bar brawling bellends were about to smash Kofi Kingston through the announce table when Sho turned up to save the day. Psych! Sho chokeslammed Kofi through the table instead, while Sheamus nailed a distracted Big E with a bro kick for the win and the titles. In terms of turns, it was effective as it caused a title change, but the teaming of Show and the Bar just felt off. And when asked why he helped out Sheamus and Cesaro, Show just shrugged and became the Bar's official third wheel. Number 25, Face. Big Show leaves the Bar in 2018. One month later, and Show had had enough of the fella's nonsense, so he chinned Cesaro and then disappeared for a year, like a bear going into hibernation. Number 24, Face. Big Show fights the Shield with Sheamus and Orton in 2013. In 2013, the Shield were fresh on their path of destruction, powerbombing anyone and everyone through everything, everywhere. The undefeated Hounds of Justice set their sights on the random on paper duo of Sheamus and Randy Orton, so Big Show, being a big lovely fella, started dishing out naps to the SWAT vest wearing swines and teamed with Orton and Sheamus to take on the Shield at WrestleMania 29. Number 23, Heel. Big Show turns on Sheamus and Orton at WrestleMania 29 in 2013. Big Show, Sheamus and Orton were soundly defeated by The Shield at WrestleMania 29. Big Show was barely tagged in by his teammates, and when he did take the entire Shield down with a huge spear, Orton tagged himself in to steal the glory, but promptly lost the match. Understandably, Big Show threw a strop and cracked both Orton and Sheamus in the jaw for their insolence. Show then beat both lads in a series of handicap matches before Randall Keith saw Show off at Extreme Rules, punt kicked him, and wrote him off WWE TV. Again. Number 22, Heel, last train to OVW in 2000. After the bottom of the parody barrel had been thoroughly scraped, Big Show got battered by Shane McMahon and pals and took a few months off. When he returned, he had one of his seasonal changes of heart, attacked The Undertaker, and decided to side with Shane. Why? No idea, really. The two formed a group called The Conspiracy with Chris Benoit, Kurt Angle, and Edge and Christian, which I have no recollection of, but it sounds absolutely ace on paper. This lasted a few weeks before Undertaker threw Show off a stage and threw a table all the way down to OVW. Number 21, Face, the Kurt Angle feud in 2004. While the SmackDown 6 were molding the blue brand into their image, Big Show was riding high as the top heel, involved in WWE title feuds and battles with the likes of young up-and-coming luchador Mr. America. 
Bored of being a massive threat to everyone on the card, Sho turned his attentions to wrestling machine Kurt Angle and was promptly humiliated, turning face after he was tranquilized and shaved bald like some terrifying giant sheep or something. Still, Sho stayed at the top of the card but had very little effect. He dominated JBL in a barbed wire cage match for the WWE title, but still lost. Then he had a sumo match with Akabono for no reason, which he also lost. Feuded with Carlito, he lost then too, before finally picking up some wins against everyone's favorite baby punter, Gene Snitsky. Blah. Number 20, Face, fighting the Wyatts in 2016. We are constantly reminded that Big Show is the world's largest athlete, which, to be fair, is a very impressive accolade. While not quite as beefy, Braun Strowman's rise as WWE's massive wrestler-in-chief as part of the Wyatt family clearly angered Big Show, with the Black Sheep eliminating Show from the Royal Rumble. So angered was Show that he turned face, reuniting Jericho with Y2J, with the two joining Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose to battle the Wyatt family. What a nice fella Big Show is, we thought. Then we looked at the calendar and realized this was in the aftermath of WWE's annual Let's Make Big Show a threat for the Rumble Drive, and they clearly wanted to continue his momentum for the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at Mania 32, which he lost. Number 19, Heel, Big Show joins the authority, again in 2014. The way Big Show was coerced into joining the authority and routinely belittled and ridiculed was one of the best storylines of his career, with the WWE Universe exploding when he finally broke free from that gang of oppressive bastards. Well, wouldn't you know it, just a few months later and he had a change of heart, knocking out Survivor Series teammate John Cena in the main event and rejoining the authority because of money… or something? Big Show defecting was a massive difference maker. With the control of WWE on the line, if the authority would have lost, they'd have disbanded. But they won the match and stayed in power. Oh, hang on, sorry, Big Show defecting didn't make a blind bit of difference because Sting debuted and helped Dolph Ziggler win the match for Team Cena, and the authority was no more. With nothing better to do, Show went on to feud with Eric Rowan, defeating Big Ginge in a stairs match at TLC, despite stairs being neither a table, nor ladders, nor a chair. Number 18, Face, SmackDown's largest athlete in 2002. After the NWO disintegrated like what sits in a bath, Big Show made his way to SmackDown where he became a big friendly fan favorite once more and had a cool new look called wearing jeans. As Brock Lesnar was the dominant heel champion of SmackDown, Sho was the only athlete big enough to take him on, but slowly turned heel in the build-up to their Survivor Series title match, throwing Nice Guy Undertaker off a stage as payback for his trip to OVW. Not bad, not good, just kind of there this one really. Number 17, Heel, WWE NWO in 2002. The NWO in WWE was weak source to say the least. While their debut was good fun, with the WWE audience going wild for Hall, Nash and Hogan, they were a shadow of their former glory. Still, the NWO persevered and got X-Pac back into the fold to help them battle Steve Austin. Big Show teamed with Austin to fight the bad guy and the kid, but swerved Austin to join the NWO, despite the fact that they had turned on him about 300 times in WCW. Big Show as part of this NWO was sort of just hanging around really, and the group quietly disbanded several months later when Kevin Nash's quads turned into dust. Number 16, Face, No Way Out return in 2008. After a year away from WWE to recharge his batteries and fight Hulk Hogan at a Memphis show, Big Show returned all smiles and waves at No Way Out to a big pop, then turned back into a heel after about 40 seconds when he attempted to eat Rey Mysterio. Number 15, Heel, teaming with Kane in 2005. As two of the largest, most easily irritable wrestlers in history, Kane and Big Show had a bond rarer than a Roddy Piper loss. After teaming together for a little bit in 2002, the big bastards rekindled their terrifying bromance and added some much needed star power to a raw tag division which was, for want of a better expression, dog poo. After beating legendary team The Heartthrobs, Kane and Show defeated Cade and Murdoch for the tag titles the very next day at Taboo Tuesday. Everyone was happy, the birds were chirping in the trees, there was no way the massive paragons of loveliness were going to turn heel anytime soon. 
Wait a second, what's that over the hill? Asked Kane. Is it an arbitrary Raw vs Smackdown feud? Yes, replied Sho. We better turn heel for no reason. And turn they did, delivering a hell of a beatdown to Batista in the lead up to Survivor Series before swiftly turning their attention back to the Raw tag division. Number 14, Heel ECW in 2006. When WWE attempted to revive ECW as a standalone brand in 2006, it needed some veteran WWE chutzpah to entice casual viewers as well as to help the predominantly young roster. Now, with hindsight, we know that WWE ECW was fresh dung, and the Big Show wasn't exactly the best fit for the brand, but his acquisition was warmly received as his positives outweighed his negatives at the time. Then, as soon as soon as he was one of the boys, he turned heel again, rejoined old buddy Paul Heyman, and beat jazz cigarette enthusiast Rob Van Dam for the ECW title in Philadelphia, nearly causing a riot in the process. A strong start, but it soon became same old, same old, with heel Big Show doing his usual shtick while clubbing people about the place. Show reigned on top of ECW for a few months to increasing apathy, drop the title to Bobby Lashley at the best pay-per-view ever, December to Dismember, then buggered off for a year in order to have a big lie down. Originally, Big Show and Paul Heyman wanted to drop the ECW title to CM Punk until Vince McMahon put the kibosh on it, and had that played out, then we would likely view Big Show's ECW run with a little more fondness. Number 13, Face, playing the game in 2006. After bludgeoning Batista with tag partner Kane, Big Show went solo again for a bit and somehow ended up in Triple H's bad books. Trips cost Show a spot in the 2005 Elimination Chamber, so Show repaid the favor a week later on Raw. Things went from 0 to 80 when, during a contract signing for a match together at New Year's Revolution, Triple H shattered Big Show's choke slamming hand with a sledgehammer. Steady on, Hunter, mate. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Triple H did all this because Big Show injured his former Evolution mate Batista, but you would be wrong. This was just Triple H being a mean bastard because he could. Show fought on, his hand now in a reinforced cast, which would allow him to dish out punishment should Trips get on the wrong end of it. But it was all for now, as Triple H won their feud, then went on to face John Cena for the WWE title at WrestleMania 22, while Show crawled back to Kane and they went after Tag Gold once more. Number 12, Heel vs Floyd Mayweather in 2008. When Show re-emerged at No Way Out to harass Rey Mysterio, he also went after boxer of a generation Floyd Money Mayweather Jr. and his entourage. Treating them all with disdain and disrespect, Big Show received a broken nose for his troubles and tried his darndest to get his hands on Mayweather so he could throw him into the sun. A match was set for WrestleMania 24, Big Show vs Floyd Mayweather Jr. Which brings me to number 11, Face vs Floyd Mayweather. Although Big Show was the heel going into the match, Mayweather wasn't exactly likeable with his braggadocious attitude and appearance as a wrestling outsider turning fans off of him. So the fans booed Mayweather out of the building and got behind Big Show instead. The match was far better than it had any right to be and Big Show looked super strong in defeat, with an in over his head Mayweather having to use a chair and knuckle dusters to get the win. Number 10, Heel Royal Rumble 2000. Two months after Big Show's WWE title triumph at Survivor Series and the title was back around Triple H's waist. Undeterred, Show tried his luck at the Royal Rumble so that he could get another crack at the gold at WrestleMania 2000, lasting all the way until the final two when he was hoisted out by The Rock. But the Great One's feet hit the floor first. They weren't meant to, mind you, but even the most electrifying man in sports entertainment has his off days. Big Show was rightly miffed at being inadvertently cheated out of the Mania main event, so he did what any sane man would do, snapped and turned the people's champion into paste. This Big Show was treated as a credible threat all the way until WrestleMania 2000, where he was successfully inserted into the main event under Shane McMahon's watchful eye. However, Show was readily eliminated from the championship Fatal 4-Way before heading to the back and raiding a fancy dress trunk. Number 9. Heel St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1999 During the incredible war between Steve Austin and Mr. McMahon, Austin regularly beat the ever-loving stuffing out of the boss. But Vince shocked the world by winning the Royal Rumble in 1999, then forfeited his WrestleMania title shot so the belt would stay around the waist of corporate champion The Rock. Commissioner HBK said that the Mania main event would go to Stone Cold by default, but Austin was in a sporting mood and challenged Mr. McMahon to a cage match at St. 
some Valentine's Day massacre in your house so he could pummel Vince a little more, his WrestleMania main event status on the line. The cage match itself was practically a snuff movie as Austin victimized McMahon with little reply, launching him off the cage through a table and making him bleed like an undercooked steak. But when it seemed like Austin had the match won, Paul White turned up for the first time in WWE, bursting through the ring mat like a giant blonde baby and battering Stone Cold. McMahon laughed, told White to throw Austin into the cage, but Big Paul was so darn strong that the cage came loose and the Texas Rattlesnake won the match. A cool way to debut, even if he inadvertently helped Austin to win. Number 8. Face – The End of Show Miz in 2010 After the inevitable end of Jericho, Big Show quickly formed an alliance with The Miz called Show Miz, like showbiz, as in show business, because Miz is an actor. Ahem. <clears throat> anyway, the two won tag gold and held the belts for two months, with Loudmouth Miz at his cocky annoying best and Show as his giant enforcer. After dropping the titles to the Hart Dynasty on an episode of Raw in 2010, Sho finally punched Miz's face in and became a lovable good guy once more. This face run for Sho was pretty darn good and lasted over two years. During this time, he feuded with Jack Swagger, the Straight Edge Society, beat Mark Henry for the World Heavyweight title, and got his first WrestleMania win when he toppled Cody Rhodes for the Intercontinental title, making him a Triple Crown and Grand Slam champion in WWE. But eventually, all his good fortune came to an end. First, he lost the IC title in the lamest way possible by stepping through a table with his massive foot, then John Laurinaitis fired him for taking the piss out of his voice, causing Sho to cry a lot. Number 7. Heel, Jericho and Friends with Vicky in 2009 after getting his jaw spun by Floyd Mayweather, Sho sniffed around the ECW title scene again for a little bit. After losing some steam, WWE thought, right, let's get him heel again now so that pesky Mayweather is out of the way, and voila, here comes Big Show marching into Unforgiven 2008 to beat up old buddy The Undertaker on behalf of SmackDown GM Vicky Guerrero. Taker won the subsequent feud, but Show was still a big deal on the blue brand. Revealed as Vicky's official bit on the side, Sho wangled his way into the World Heavyweight title scene once more, taking on John Cena and Edge for the gold at WrestleMania 25. Although unsuccessful at Mania, Big Show stayed a dominant force, feuding with Cena, then making a nuisance of himself around the US title scene, eventually ending up in the tag division as part of Jericho. A rare example of Big Show being used properly and effectively as a heel bully. Just a shame they semi-ruined it with his could see it from 2,000 miles away swerve at bragging rights. Number 6. Heel – The Unholy Alliance in 1999 after the corporate ministry slowly fell apart like an old shoe, Undertaker realized he had nothing to do, so decided to fight both his brother Kane and X-Pac, the latter of whom cost him a first blood WWE title match against Steve Austin. As Taker was getting his satanic little goatee punched off his face by Kane on Raw, Big Show came out for the save, turned heel, and shook hands with the dead man. Unofficially known as the Unholy Alliance, this was one of the first storylines in WWE that Show could really sink his teeth into, with the veteran Taker helping out the rough round the edges Big Show inside and outside the ring. This union, no, not that one, would prove to be fruitful, as the two lifted the WWE tag titles on two occasions and feuded with the Rock and Sock connection whilst also flirting around the world title scene. But as soon as the team started getting any momentum and several storyline seeds were planted, Undertaker had to take time off to heal up, later to re-emerge as the American Badass. Big Show didn't mind and soon found greater success on his own. Number 5. Heel – Ironclad Contract in 2012 After Johnny Ace kicked Big Show to the curb and made him cry, he agreed to bring him back – at a price. With Ace out of his depth in a match against John Cena at Over the Limit, Show turned up to knock out Big Match John for the millionth time and handed Laurinaitis the win. The Lemsip allergic general manager had tied Big Show down to an ironclad contract worth tons of money, and as a result, Big Show was now Laurinaitis' own personal weapon of destruction. When asked why he sided with the devil, Show claimed that none of his fellow professionals offered him support when he was fired, so he came back to beat the absolute piss out of all of them. Fair enough, until you remember that, A, this is WWE and no one stays storyline fired for longer than six days, and B, Big Show was storyline fired for precisely six days. 
True to his word, Sho did beat the absolute piss out of everybody in this heel run. He feuded with Cena, got involved in the WWE title scene with champ CM Punk, then eventually buggered off to SmackDown where he won the World Heavyweight title for the second time. The best bit though, this Big Show run included the chairs match against Sheamus at TLC. You know, the one with that humongous steel chair that I've thought about every single day since it happened. Number 4 Face Big Show Turns on Vince in 1999 Ah, the turn that started it all, merely a month and a half into his WWE run. Little did we know at the time that this would set a precedent for his entire career with Titan Sports. So, we've already established that Sho came into WWE in a blaze of fury, and set straight to work decimating the main event scene as Mr. McMahon and the corporation's monster-in-chief. Unfortunately for Big Show, his numerous attempts to thwart Steve Austin and co never went according to plan, causing McMahon to become increasingly irate. Needing a last roll of the dice to stop Austin getting the WWE title, Vince set Big Show against Mankind at WrestleMania 15, the winner refereeing the main event title showdown. Even with the odds stacked in his favour, Big Show failed his task. Vince had had enough and slapped Sho in the mush in the middle of the ring, clearly forgetting that although he was bungling, the Big Show was still a seven foot tall beast of a man, and this slap awoke the giant inside. Sho turned on his handler and assaulted him to a huge pop. Now free from the shackles of the corporation, Sho later teamed with fellow renegades Mankind, Test, and Ken Shamrock to form Union of the People You Ought to Respect, Son, aka Up Yours. Very clever. But they were only a thing for about 70 seconds. It's also <laughs> likely the last times the words Union and WWE will exist together in harmony. Number 3 Face the Authority in 2013. Following his tantrum at Randy Orton and Sheamus, Big Show spent a few months on sabbatical before coming back to WWE to find the company in dire straits. Now under the control of the authority, Big Show didn't like what he was seeing and publicly lambasted the state of the Fed. This didn't sit well with COO Triple H. Hunter and the Authority made life hell for the Big Show, from feeding him to the Shield to forcing him to knock out friends Daniel Bryan the Miz and the great Dusty Rhodes, Big Show had no choice to comply or else he would be p 45 Show was in between a rock and a hard place and was constantly belittled and emasculated on WWE TV, the threat of redundancy constantly looming above his head. It was an effectively told story and you couldn't help but feel for Show as every time he went to lash out, he simply dropped his shoulders like like a beaten hound and took whatever punishment was doled out to him. After constantly toying with him, Stephanie McMahon fired Big Show on Raw in October 2013. Penniless and jobless, Big Show was not going to stand by idly anymore and with nothing to lose, marched down to the ring, fended off the shield, then sent Triple H's chin 3,000 years into the future with a huge WMD, you love it, as the crowd erupted with glee. Number 2 Face WWE Champion in 1999 We've covered a few times just how bloody insane Big Boss Man was in the Attitude Era. He murdered dogs and turned them into food, he was hanged at WrestleMania by a team of Draculas, and of course he made Big Show's life a living hell. Bossman just did not like Big Show one bit, and by taking things far too far with the seven-footer, turned Show into a hugely sympathetic babyface by default. So let's recap what Boss Man did, shall we? He recited a lovely poem about Big Show's recently deceased dad being eaten by worms and other horrific sentiments. This was bad enough until the day of the funeral where Boss Man stole the coffin as Big Show surfed it while dressed as an extra from The Matrix. Yes, this was all crap and far too over the top and has since gone down as one of the most absurd storylines in WWE history, but in terms of making Big Show a true blue babyface, it worked wonders. Show won the feud convincingly, beating Boss Man, Prince Albert, Viscera and Midian in a 4 on 1 handicap match at Survivor Series, then later the same night lifted the WWE title after beating Triple H and The Rock in a triple threat match. Number 1 Heel Smackdown Champion in 2002 Remember before when we said Big Show slowly turned heel heading into his WWE title showdown with Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series 2002? Well, during the main event, he fully pulled the trigger. Leading into the bout, Paul Heyman repeatedly asked Lesnar to pull out of the match as he didn't think he could win. This in itself made Big Show sound amazing, doubly so considering that the rookie beast was undefeated heading into their title bouts. 
build was great, with both men assaulting each other week after week on SmackDown. Tables were destroyed, chairs were swung, people were launched off stages, and Rey Mysterio was thrown into the crowd like a lucha frisbee. Cut to Survivor Series itself, and when Lesnar looked to have the match won, Paul Heyman swerved him, and with the help of a steel chair, the big nasty bastard was WWE Champion once more, becoming the first man to beat Brock Lesnar in singles competition. Show only held the title for a month before Kurt Angle beat him for it via Lesnar interference, but that doesn't matter. Big Show looked like an absolute killer in this feud, and was constantly presented as such. Lesnar's fight back to the title scene only made him a bigger star, and when the two collided again in 2003, the bloody ring blew up from all that beef.